Hello, Ventura. Changi Airport is my favorite airport, and it was ranked world's number one airport as per Skytrax until it fell to number two just last year. As a Singaporean myself, I'm very upset that we lost the top spot. Can you believe this world-class airport is now number two? In this video, we're going to investigate if Changi Airport has really fallen to number two, or that Skytrax is just wrong. Let's begin. In Changi Airport, I never have to fear about missing my flight. Back when I was living in Indonesia, I get very anxious whenever I have to catch a flight. The only reliable way to get to the airport is by car, but traffic is always so uncertain, so I always have to add an extra hour or two to account for potential traffic jams or crowded airport. In a way, it's very consistent, but consistently inconsistent. Anyway, there's always that looming fear that I won't be able to get to the airport in time. In Singapore, there are many easy and reliable ways to get to the airport. Each of the terminal have direct access to the public bus network and they're all very walkable to the train station. When I'm not rushing, I know I can safely take the bus or train. And when I need to get there fast, I know I can safely take the taxi and be in the airport on time. That's why I feel a lot more carefree when I'm flying via the Changi Airport. In many public places, the car traffic management for passenger pickup and drop-off can get very chaotic. Just imagine a pickup and drop-off lane where cars are pulling over trying to pick up or drop off their passengers. At the same time, cars are trying to leave. At some point, the first lane will be full of cars that's pulled over. As a result, the incoming cars will start to attempt to stop at the second lane, thus blocking the first lane cars from leaving. And bam! you have a frustrating nightmare of a gridlock. Thankfully, this doesn't happen in Changi Airport because the car traffic management is handled beautifully. Let me show you. Firstly, the pickup and drop-off of arrivals and departures are separated, effectively halving all of the incoming car traffic. The whole stretch of pickup area is also well marked with door numbers, making pickup and drop-off very efficient. Secondly, there's a strictly enforced no waiting policy. There was once I took taxi to the airport and I was taking a while because I was counting cash to pay my driver. Then we heard tapping on the windscreen. It was a security guard telling my taxi to drive off. Nowadays, they use enforcement camera, so they'll just charge it under your traffic violations. And number three, there is actually a dedicated through lane so that the cars that are pulling over will not block oncoming traffic. In combination, this helps passenger pickup traffic to flow efficiently without blockage. Next, let's investigate the world-class user experience at Changi Airport. As travelers, one of our biggest pain is having our luggages everywhere until we can check it in. Fortunately, it's super easy to check in at Changi Airport. The user experience is very streamlined. When you arrive by car, you'll be dropped off at the departure hall, which is exactly where you can check in your luggages. Sweet. If you know the name of the airline you're taking, <laughs> which you should, then you can even tell your driver in advance so that he'll stop and drop you off right at the door in front of your check-in counters. But why check in at the check-in counter when you can be having your best last day in Singapore? Here's how you can do it. In Changi Airport, there's a free guest service called the Early Check-In. Simply arrive at the Jewel Early Check-In counters and you'll get your boarding pass and be liberated of your luggages. You only need to check how early your airline allows you to check in. If you're flying Singapore Airlines, you can check in up to 24 hours early. From here on, you have the full freedom to go out, explore and play. But what fun things is there to do, you might ask? Well, here are some of the iconic attractions that you can start with. The famous Vortex Waterfall in Jewel, but don't count at the wrong time because it doesn't run 24-7. One of the best ways to look at the Vortex is actually to take the SkyTrain from T2 to T3. Your SkyTrain will cut through Jewel and drive by the Vortex, giving you the prime view that no one else could see. And if you don't mind paying, actually there's a lot of ticketed attractions at the top of the jewel. There's the canopy bridge, where you get the best view of the vortex and its surroundings. And playful attractions like the bouncing net, hedge maze, or the mirror maze. Honestly, there are more than enough fun attractions that are free to do. For example, the Kinetic Rain at T1, where you can watch hypnotizing, dancing metal raindrops. The viewing gallery at T1, where you can watch planes come and go. 
there is actually a viewing gallery in each of the terminal, but T1 has the best view. The massive digital waterfall at T2, the free 24 hours movie screening, and the big indoor slide at T3. And if you're hungry, there are tons of food options in all of the terminals. Personally, I like the Kopitiam at T3 because I get to eat local food at a reasonable price. For higher end dining, just take a walk and pick what you fancy. It's also super easy to get between terminals. Everywhere is so walkable, even to and from Jewel, except T4, but there's a free shuttle, so it's not too bad. If walking is not your thing, don't worry, there's also the SkyTrain. With such wide options and facilities, flying via the Changi Airport can easily become a fun day itinerary. Changi Airport is the only airport that I'm confident to arrive with only one hour before my flight because I know I'll still make it. The airport layout and the streamlined procedures are just so efficient, it's out of this world. There are always a lot of check-in counters that are in the public area, so there is no security checkpoints to slow you down. In some terminals, they've even moved in to fully automated check-in experiences. Each of these machines is as good as a check-in counter. With these many machines, it makes it faster for everybody. You get your boarding pass and you leave your luggage behind all in one place. But take note, some airlines might be a bit more uptight. So on a normal basis, it's still safer to check in a little bit earlier. When you're done, just walk through the departure gate and experience the world's fastest immigration procedures. Really, it's so fast, I'll show you, I'll do it in one breath. breathtaking. <laughs> now I need to sit down. <laughs> the reason why it's so fast, it's all these auto gates. Back then, only residents can use these auto gates, but nowadays, all travelers of all nationalities can use it. Also, most of the time, there's only randomized back checks over here, so it will not be such a bad bottleneck. I get very triggered by excessive airport security. I remember I was flying from Thailand a few months back, and there were four different gantries that I had to queue up and scan my passport on. While I was in the queue, there were at least six different instances where an airport staff came over to ask for my passport to check it. Like, why? I already scanned my passport at the gantry, and the previous guy already checked it. Why you want to check again? Why? You know what? If this video gets 1,000 likes, I will personally go to Doha myself to show you that the number one belongs to Changi Airport. So hit that like button. And congratulations, you've reached the best transit area in the world. And my favorite thing here is that I still have my full water bottle after passing immigration. This is water from my home sweet home. I don't know about you guys, but I love drinking water from my own house. There are a lot of things you can do in this transit area. I will show you some of the epic ones. Number one, it's crazy. There's a free butterfly garden here. I won't say that there's a lot of butterflies, but there's enough to have a close encounter with one. Anyway, it's free. And there's a movie theater. No, 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 not movie screening. Movie theater. There's also a rooftop pool at T1, but it's closed at the moment, so I can't show you the pool. Woohoo! The receptionist saw me filming and let me see the pool. So, let's go. So yeah, they have a bar here. It's like a pool and a bar combination. Thank you so much. So the cool thing is, this will double as a viewing deck, like in the jacuzzi, playing the pool, with planes flying overhead. And if you get a room with the transit hotel that holds the swimming pool, you get to access the swimming pool for free. Otherwise, it's $28 per entry. If you're tired and you just want to rest, there are plenty of resting areas where you can just sit down and even take a nap. Or you can also just pick a bench or any surface that you feel comfortable on. If you prefer greater privacy and comfort, then there are also transit hotels, pay per use lounge and shower facilities. By now, you should know your gate number. But if not, don't worry, there's all these information boards everywhere in the airport. To get to your gate, just follow the signboard that's everywhere. Mine is D48, so I'm going that way. 
out of the every two to three gates, there's a toilet. Toilets here, toilets there, toilets there. The boarding gate is our last checkpoint with a security check, which is where we need to say goodbye to our water or just chug it. Realistically, once you join the queue at the boarding gate, you will not miss a flight. You really need a reason for them to hate you, for them to leave you after you get all the way here. The official direction is to arrive at your boarding gate at least 20 minutes before your flight departure. Thankfully, there's always a water refill station inside the boarding gate, which is very important, especially when flying economy, because the water prices up there is insane. One of my favourite points about Changi Airport is that most of the boarding gates are connected to the plane directly via a corridor. So you can conveniently walk into your plane in comfort rather than cramming into another bus just to get on. <sighs> what a beautiful user journey. But now, I need to take you back outside to show off to you how beautiful the whole airport really is. Let's go. Welcome, welcome to Terminal 3. Personally, T3 is my favourite. I just really like the very high ceiling with the abstract metal plates. Gives a very futuristic, modern feel. Can you believe? Each terminal has their own distinct style. Take a good look and compare with the style at T2. To me, T2 tries to be very close to nature. You can find a lot of gentle curves and a lot of vegetations decorating the terminal. Together with the blue carpets and the new digital waterfall, it makes it feel like an underwater cave. I just have one criticism. I feel like the warm lighting doesn't really match the vibe. Now, let's look at T1. To me, T1 gives a very rustic, old style feel because of the red carpet and the wooden finishes. And back to the kinetic rain, this is actually my favourite part of T1. I still remember my first time at Changi Airport as a kid, I was hypnotised by the dancing metal raindrops. And now, here I am, years later, in the same spot, still as hypnotised. Now, let's go to Terminal 4. At first, Terminal 4 can feel very underwhelming because it's actually the smallest terminal. but it's actually designed to be the most advanced. The whole travel experience here in T4 is fully automated. You get your boarding pass from one of these machines, then you drop off your luggage at this other machine. However, the security checkpoint is right at the departure gate, so you cannot bring your home water into the transit area. And again, just look at how gorgeous Jewel is. Truly, it's the Jewel of Changi Airport. I'm not big on shopping, but you can probably buy anything and everything in the Changi Airport. There are so many retail selections, but if you are looking for something unique to bring back from Singapore, then you can look out for this. It's actually just candied meat jerky, but so far, only a few brands in Singapore hits the right taste profile. But beware, some destinations ban meat imports, so make sure the local laws where you are going to allows for meat to be carried into the country. One time, I bought a pack for my camping trip in Australia, but I have to give it up at the customs. <sighs> I wish I could have just opened it up and gobbled all of it on the spot. So, do you like Changi Airport? If you want me to personally review Doha Airport, hit the like button. For more travel guides, check it out over here. I'll see you there.